we is finally time for the safari and it's just starting to get nice and cool as well so hopefully we'll lots of animals out. Who's as excited for our safari as I am today? <laughs> couple real quick ground rules up before we get started. Just make sure we don't stand up at any point. All lap sitters have to be completely seated on your laps. And just don't call out on any of the animals. That's pretty much it, folks. Now that is our all clear. So let's head on in, folks. We're heading on into the Little Ituri Forest. Now the animals that inhabit here are really fantastic at camouflaging themselves. It's their best defense mechanism against predators. <laughs> yeah. That's a duck. Now, over here on the left, folks, look at that. There's a black rhino hanging out in the water there. Now, not only is this an awesome view of it, but it's an incredibly rare sight and one that most people will never be able to see in their lifetimes. There are actually less than 5,000 black rhino remaining in the entire world. They're critically endangered. And those low numbers are unfortunately due to illegal poaching. Rhino horn is highly valued on the underground trade market because some cultures believe it has a medicinal property. That's completely false, so folks. Rhino horn is made up of keratin, which you may recognize is the exact same material that our hair and fingernails are made of. Now, when spawning rainbows, the best place to look is actually under the water. If those spend a majority of their time underwater, some cool and out of the hot sun, they can stay underwater for around five to eight minutes at a time without having to come up for a breath. on that island on the left there, those are pink fat pelicans. During their mating season is when the feathers on their necks and back do change, turn an interesting pink color, hence the name pink fat. They are colonial nesters though, which just means they nest in groups of anywhere from 20 pairs to even up to 500 pairs of pelicans. Now my friends, all of these black birds here, these are actually vultures and they're native to Florida, so I have absolutely no idea how they got all the way out here to Africa. Must have been a very long flight. <laughs> Now my friends, we're heading on up out of the forest and over to the savanna. You're going to notice a big change in vegetation. The forest is dense and lush, but the savanna, not so much. The savanna acts more like a superhighway for millions of different migratory animals every year. And it's formed by those same animal species. So elephants, they'll kind of bulldoze old trees. Giraffe will prune the underside of trees and antelope act a bit like lawnmowers, keeping the grasses nice and low. Now over here on the left, my friends, is my favorite view on the entire reserve. The savanna is an incredibly unique and beautiful ecosystem and it's all part of the wild Africa. We're trying so hard to conserve and protect. Now my friends, don't worry, I do see those giraffes. We're going to talk about them in just a few moments. I want to talk about the springbok coming up first. They're these really tiny animals with the white bellies. Now, the springbok are really amazing. They actually have a behavior called pronking. What they'll do is they'll jump six feet in the air and 13 feet forward in a single leap. It's pretty awesome. Now, my friends, you can't really see it, but I can. Above the, in front of the truck in front of me, there is actually a giraffe in the road. So, we're going to be hanging out right here for just a few moments. <laughs> Hang tight. No. Giraffe are born at around six feet tall and get to be 18 to 20 feet, which does in fact make them the world's tallest land animal. Now friends, on the left side of the vehicle, we will have a fantastic view of the giraffe, but I want to talk about the Patterson Zealand on the right here first. Those are females, that's a female and a calf, so you can't tell their size, but males are actually the largest antelope in the world. Oh, Male Patterson Zealand get to be around six feet tall and two thousand pounds. Now right over here on our left folks, get those cameras out. There's a Masai giraffe so, so close to us. Look at that. That's awesome. And on the right as well, there's one pretty close to us here as well. And two babies in the back on the right. Oh, but friends, oh my goodness. Over on the left, there's a spotted hyena. Two of them actually. Wow. Check them out. 
So it's kind of a common misconception that hyena are related to dogs. They're not. They're in their own family called hyena day, and they're more related to cats than anything else. A hyena have a very girl power society, so even the lowest ranking female of a hyena clan still ranks higher than the highest ranking male. Oh, that wow. giraffe's crossing the road now. There's a giraffe drinking over here on our left. You can see how kind of difficult it is for them to bend their necks down there and kind of spread their front feet, front legs. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of that um, now, over giraffe over on there. Right, you can see the animals with the big giant horns. These are Ancoli cattle. Wow. Ancoli cattle are sometimes called Watusi cattle. <gasps> wow. Now those horns look super heavy, right? They're actually not. They're hollow on the inside and have kind of a honeycomb structure to them. They'll circulate blood through their horns. That does help regulate their body temperature. Now crossing the road up here is a whole herd of white bearded wildebeest. You'll see them over by those sable antelopes there. Now they get that name from a from a uh, an Afrikaans word. Afrikaans is the language of the Dutch settlers of Africa. That word is wildebeest. It does mean wild beast, referring to their long faces. But they're also called a new G N U from the low grunting sound that they make. They have one of the largest migrations of almost any species, around 1.5 million in a single herd. Pretty easy to tell males from females. Not just because of the size difference, but males have this beautiful bright blue and red coloring on their faces and backsides. It actually gets brighter as they become excited during dominance displays. Now they like to hide on the tops of trees as well as in bushes. I don't see any out in plain sight, unfortunately. So if you kind of need a visual as to what Amanda looks like, I think her feet keep blanking. Now over on the right though, folks, way in the back there, there's a male African elephant. We know he's a male because he's by himself. After around 15 years or so of living with their mothers, male African elephants do go off on their own and live solitary or in small loose bachelor groups. But that's kind of rare. But those 15 years they spend with their mothers is one of the longest adolescences in the animal world. It's actually second only to us humans who can have an adolescence of upwards of 30 plus years. Now, because I actually, I don't really know where we are. I think I must have taken a wrong mm -hmm. turn or something. Um, okay, and this bridge does look like it's probably seen some better days. I don't like that noise at all. Oh, would you look at that zip tie? Oh, folks. Okay, look at the right, look at the right, look at the right. We're good, we're good, we're good. Thanks so much. All right. Look at that, folks. There are some tusk marks coming up in the clay on the right. That tells me elephants have been by. We're going to keep going and see if we can catch up with some members of the herd. Elephants do live in matriarchal familial herds with mothers and cats. And if you look behind us on the left, I think that's pretty much the only glimpse of some elephants we're going to get. Way in the back there. Now the oldest female in the herd acts like a matriarch. She's the one who knows where the really good food and water sources are. So she's the one who will lead her herd to them. And they're constantly migrating in search of fresh food and water sources. Our next stop is going to be up at a Kobe Rock formation. And the most famous Kobe Rock is Pride Rock from the Lion King. I'm going to get us there as soon as I can. I do go a whopping top speed of 8 miles per hour. And this Kobe. Now, lions like to use Kobe's as places to sleep, sunbathe, and look out for prey. Lions do remain inactive for around 18 to 20 hours out of the entire day. But that's just because they're mostly nocturnal. So they rest during the day, that way they have plenty of energy to go out hunting at night. And we're gonna swing around, get a better view of those rhino in just a moment. So hang tight, folks. I am not sure where that rhino went, but there was a white rhino. Yes, rhino. Just 
finished our safari. I got lots of clips, there was loads of animals out there. The lions weren't out, but they normally come out really late on, so we need to like book a really late fast pass for the um, like nighttime safaris if you want to find the lions. But it's starting to cool down now. There's like loads of giraffes and everything out, causing havoc, crossing the road, in front of all the jeeps and everything. So if you want to go on the safari, definitely do it late at night early in the morning we've done hours i think it's about six ish now so they were like all starting to get a lot more active now so i'll definitely do it later on if you want to see more animals so we've done it during the day before and you've not really seen much that's the most i've ever seen any animals on the safari so later on's better now i think we are heading to toilets <laughs> then to our Expedition Everest uh, fast pass and then we are going to try and start getting set for Rivers of Light because we're not sure what time it like opens, get seats and everything so we really really want to see it so we're going to make sure that we're there really early and set and ready to go. We're just coming into like Yeti land in Asia essentially and that is the stadium where they seat Rivers of Light. So it's not that big really when you think of when you think of how big Fantasmic is. It's not that many seats. So we're gonna make sure we get there really early. And make sure we get a seat for it. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out so